Man, it's been a while since I played that one. That song's called Whiskey Before Breakfast. Oh, man. It's funny because I barely got through that without completely uh, screwing it up. Um, not a hard song, but, uh, man, you got to have those do-do-do-do-do's under your fingers. And uh, uh, Guthrie Trap coming to you here from my house in East Nashville, Tennessee. Thank God it's Friday. I don't even know what that means anymore. Uh, every day is like Saturday, it seems. Um, hope you uh, guys are doing great. Uh, thought I'd play a little bluegrass. I had a guy uh, ask me a question, and man, I gotta say, I do see all the comments, and there's been a, some amazing ones, and I wish I could pick up the phone and talk to every one of you guys for an hour on the phone, because that's how much this stuff means to me, and man, I've, I've just, there's so much I want to respond to on these comments, but I simply just do not have time to do it, and so uh, I'd love to see you guys at a show or something like that where we could catch up and, and really, um, you know, just make the connection because it's really special to me and it means a lot. So with that being said, um, so uh, obviously it's casual Friday here. I'm wearing sweatpants and a, and a hoodie, but uh, I know this, you're not here for the fashion. You're here for the, for the music. So, uh, and that's what it's all about. Anyway, I had a guy comment and say, hey man, where did you get your technique? Because it seems like um, you're able to play fast and clean and, and all that kind of stuff. And I will say, uh, of course, no extra charge from mistakes, which I did steal that line from Danny Gatton. I saw somebody uh, post that. I I watched Danny Gatton's video on um, on uh, Hot Licks or whatever it was, the Arlen Roth series that he did, and uh, I know I'll get a, a lot of comments uh, on that because I'm not. Um, uh, that's a little slightly before my time, but not quite. So I was when I was a kid, I used to spend a lot of time watching a Pat the Pat Flynn uh, acoustic guitar video that got me into the cage system and changed my life and then i watched the danny gatton video which also changed my life and between those two things and the sam bush mandolin video and the tony rice video um that was kind of like the benchmark for when i really started to get into knowing how some of this stuff um started to sound and and, and some stuff that started to work i think okay right uh all this is just my opinion and my theory guys you're here on the channel uh, you know you're on your own after that. Uh, I'm kind of kidding. But anyway, um, had a great trip with John Oates yesterday. We flew up to New York and flew back in the same day. I was completely exhausted last night. We got a good night's rest. Uh, I know this is way more information than you need, but hey, you know, we're here to share. So um, flew up and played this cool little place called Illegal Mezcal in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Uh, and I guess that's like the East Nashville of Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn now, just north on the river uh, from Williamsburg and all that. And it's uh, transitioning into transitioning into like a hipster area. Go figure. Uh, really cool guys. Did a thing for Paste Magazine up there, and uh, that was just really cool. And uh, always great to hang with John. And next uh, Mar uh, next week, March sixteenth, we head out for our tour for the Northeast. So check that out. Always check out the links below. I gotta say that. Been getting a bunch of good feedback from Artist Works, and I'm actually going out there uh, the beginning of April. Uh, to do a bunch of updates to the curriculum uh, um, and additions. And so not necessarily updates because what there is good, but I've learned so much about teaching in the past few years and how to really, um, you know, kind of um, articulate some of these things, I think in a better way, at least I've learned from it. So anyway, back to the technique. Um, the reason why I played that little fiddle tune, Whiskey Before Breakfast, is because that Thinking back on it in my early life, that did have a lot to do with my technique. Playing the mandolin. I may, might even grab that thing and play a little bit. Somebody was mentioning the mandolin, which um, my chops are a little uh, rusty and dusty on that, but I think we can brush it off. The hardest part about playing that little thing is keeping it in tune. They say the mandolin means out of tune in Italian. Uh, and so I think they're right. Um, so you spend half your life tuning that thing and the other half of your life playing it out of tune. So, you know, no extra charge for the comedy here either, folks. Um, I'm in a good mood today. It's going great. I got some free time ahead of me um, and uh, looking forward to a good tour coming up. Got a lot of stuff accomplished and I'm looking forward to rocking on. So thanks for being here. If you don't like all the talking, um, I don't know what to tell you. It's, I have fun talking to you guys. So 
Um, anyway, the, the, the technique stuff came from um, playing a lot of this bluegrass. And when I say the do 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 do's, I, I mean this. If I take the G major scale. If I take that and I go, those are the do 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 do's, and that's a really uh, technical term for what that uh, exercise is. But that's some serious bluegrass stuff right there. That's like getting into taking the major scale. And really breaking it up to where, man, talk about a great right and left hand exercise. Now you don't hear me say that very often, but that's a really good one. And man, that right hand for trying to play. So, Bluegrass and jazz to me have a lot in common. Uh, you've got extremely knowledge guys over here that know all their music theory and all their jazz harmony and stuff like that, you know, and, and I know there's a lot of exceptions to every rule here, but let's generalize for the sake of uh, Friday afternoon video here. So um, jazz guys know their shit. Bluegrass guys uh, play a lot of three chord songs. And of course, Again, I'm generalizing, but you know those two those two different um, uh, genres. So, but you've got an inch, you've got a head that's a that's a, a lick or a, a melody or a, a tune, and then you improvise from there. And so, uh, that to me is a is a really uh, cl uh, close parallel to the bluegrass and the jazz world. And then you've also got uh, if you if you can play fast and clean with musicality, of course, is a given. Uh, then you're considered one of the cats. I mean, you can, you know, if you can play clean and you're not stumbling around and 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 playing sloppy, then you're considered one of the good guys, right? Any kind of classical guitar, jazz guitar, bluegrass instruments where there's nothing to hide behind. You're not playing with a lot of distortion or effects or anything like that. It's just you and the instrument. That's why it took me uh, three hours to to do this. Uh, simplest version of whiskey before uh, before breakfast without making a lot of mistakes i'm kidding it didn't take me that long but it did take a minute um so anyway that's where a lot of this came from and it's it, it is it's trying to play clean see that's terrible that was not clean this would be more clean So there's a lot you can do with with just three nice chords. You know, a C, F, G, G7, almost like a Doc Watson kind of style or something, where you're playing the chords. So um, it's just doing that, the, the combination between learning to play that style when I was a kid, 
Having heroes like Mark O'Connor, Sam Bush, Bela Fleck, Jerry Douglas, Tony Rice, David Grisman, um, the list goes on and on and on. I'm not talking about, I don't know how to say this without sounding like an elitist. <laughs> I'm not talking about guys in acoustic bands where they think out of tune playing and sloppy playing is cool. To me, that's not cool. Uh, it's cool to really focus on being a, a, a really good musician and a really good player. Um, and you know what I mean? I'm talking about like some of these kind of hippie, uh, which there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying uh, a lot of these, uh, and I'm even going to get more of offensive here and say the North Carolina, Colorado, uh, you know, hippies that have maybe smoked a little too much something that, that smelled funny, or they might have drank a really a lot of really smelly beer. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but we all know who we're talking about. Um, and that, to where they've just kind of accepted sloppy, mm. out-of-tune playing is maybe part of their style or something like that. I'm not a fan. Um, I just want to hear guys that can really play. That's why I said my heroes and my top bar for acoustic music is are the guys that I just mentioned. And there's some ex exceptional records. This was meant to be a short video. Um, there's some exceptional records that you can check out. Bela Fleck Drive, classic record. Uh, Strength in Numbers, the Telluride Sessions. Tony Rice Plays and Sings Bluegrass. Um, anything by Sam Bush and, and those guys. Jerry Douglas, all, the, all that stuff. Incredible, top-notch uh, playing. But my two favorites are Tony Rice Sings and Plays Bluegrass, which is a traditional bluegrass, but some of the most ferocious playing on there. If you really want to hear uh, bluegrass harmony singing and how a bluegrass band plays together where everybody has their part to make the music sound great, that's my number one. Tony Rice sings and plays bluegrass. Then if you want to hear some amazing new acoustic music, check out check out the very first David Grisman quintet record with Tony Rice on there. Uh, and then check out Bela Fleck Drive and check out Strength in Numbers with the Tell uh, it's called the Telluride Sessions. Listen to those records and then send me some comments and let me know what you think about that. Mind-blowing stuff. So anyway, there, there's a little rant. I, I could go on and on and on about this stuff, but I'm going to leave it with that. And before I dig myself into an even deeper hole here, you guys think I'm a nice guy so far, so I don't want to ruin that with uh, with a bunch of a uh, bunch of stuff here. So anyway, I'm joking. But thank you guys so much. Um, I, more on the uh, bluegrass and stuff. I, I could have gone on and on and on about that, but you get the idea where I'm coming from. And so... Again, man, looking forward to the weekend. It's supposed to snow here tonight. I was just on my front porch drinking coffee uh, in a t-shirt. It was feeling incredible. And then tonight we get snow. So there you go. Welcome to Nashville. Signing off for now, folks. See y'all real soon. Check out the links below for all the stuff that uh, um, I don't want to sound like a used car salesman here, but I am trying to make a living and keep my career going as a musician. Uh, so far, so good. Again, check out the links below and I'll talk to you guys real soon. Thank you.